In this video, I want to show how to deploy a standalone Neo4j instance with a single core to a managed Kubernetes cluster. If you run a workload that is a little bit simpler, for example, that is just more like a proof of concept or um, a first um, initial start to deploy a Neo4j instance on your Kubernetes cluster, then one single node might actually already be sufficient. And um, it's actually also important to think about um, a proper backup and a data migration strategy, maybe even first, uh, before we scale out. And for this reason, I modified the Helm chart um, that I previously showed a bit to make it simpler to only have a single instance that doesn't use the cluster discovery. So what I did, I forked um, the repo here for the uh, Neo4j Helm instance and simplified it that now the stateful set only has a single replica and we got rid of um, a few of the services um, for what I used it uh, here in my case. And then what I can show uh, you now again how to deploy this to my managed cluster. If I say, for example, we have a Helm template um, and create this again into our file with the Kubernetes resources, then we can again apply these resources, then Neo4j, and it will now create, well, less uh, stuff on our cluster for us. For example, there are less services being involved. Uh, before, if you can remember, we had like a bunch of services for the cluster discovery within Neo, but only now we have one for the actual uh, graph database um, Neo4j that we connect to. Um, in our uh, from within our applications and similarly we also have just one part available that is the core part actually this uh, helm chart always creates a service uh, test for us a test part that also doesn't wait uh, in this instance so we would actually need to uh, restart this uh, once our database um, is up and running and then we could use this from uh, within our application and of course also create uh, these instances again so what I do in this case, I don't use cube control exec uh, here for this example, but what I will actually do, I say I uh, run a port forward with all of these ports that are interested in to my instance. The last port is actually used for the metrics uh, that we can enable. So that will be a Prometheus um, output, by the way. And these are um, now being used. I could, uh, for example, connect my database browser to it, or of course the cypher shell command also locally. This is what I will do now, actually. I say, well, now please take these um, cypher resources for my test data. So uh, these are the things I want to create now. And then again, well, pipe them into uh, the cypher shell. In this case, it will be just, well, the local host um, address of Neo and then using Neo4j and these credentials that I created. And once my database is actually up and running, I can use this and now fire this against the database and then see hopefully an outcome. Okay, what I can do actually, I just can connect to um, the Cypher shell here locally and then say, okay, please, uh, again just see what's uh, going on there and now okay it's already something in our database again so that's the good news and then of course you can assume that i now can already deploy my application and connect to that single database so we do this uh, real quick and then say okay please apply this and while we're waiting um, for this i could go to the local host a browser so that is the Neo4j browser that now will just connect to this instance. Actually, for this instance, uh, we would have to uh, change the connection URL to localhost. And then I will just log in here. And then we actually are connected. I see the nodes being available. And then I can just browse through everything that's available here, just as a sort of way to debug it because we have that local port forward. And also once um, my application is up and running, my Quarkus application um, here, um, similar to the last video, I can say, okay, please just port forward now because uh, in this case, I didn't create some other resources to connect to my cluster. And then we can say, well, curl localhost, uh, get these coffee beans again, which of course connects to my Neo instance, now in this case, the single core 
but backed by the same service. So for the application is actually nothing different. And then it will uh, create that data as well. So this is something that is a little bit uh, simpler uh, to set up uh, if we only uh, need a single core. Now, of course, we also only have a single uh, persistent volume available. And in all cases, actually, if I would delete my uh, Helm chart or all of these resources again, so if I would, uh, for example, execute this one, then still the persistent volume claim and the persistent volume is available. So that stays intact. And that's a feature because my data, of course, resides there and I could reclaim it by restarting um, this new instance again. And then I have my data uh, still being available. Thanks for watching.